Shari coming to you from the story time room, our usual spot. I miss you here in person, but remember you can still visit us curbside and you can ask for books online or you can call us and ask for five items per day per family. So I hope you're taking advantage of that. If you haven't, I hope you will. You'll see on the ticker down here, southfield.readscore.com is where you can sign up for our fun and fabulous summer reading. And today our theme is, as you see on my banner here, dress up, yay, dress up. I love getting dressed up. I love wearing costumes. I have some, some costumes here, just some very basic ones. I do. I know I'm a grown up, but I still love to do dress up. I do dress up uh, for uh, the Dickens Festival and for the Renaissance Fair. I love getting dressed up in costumes. It's a lot of fun. My husband and I go to all kinds of things. So I'm happy I get to share some of my costuming with you today in our dress up story time. Let me take down my banners so it's easier for you to see me. The story I'm going to tell you today is a very popular story that you've probably heard, but I'm changing it just a little. It's by a very famous uh, story creator, story author, Hans Christian Andersen. And I know you've heard of a lot of his stories, The Ugly Duckling and, of course, Little Mermaid. And this one that I'm going to tell you today, it's called The Emperor's New Clothes, only I'm doing The Queen's New Clothes in my version, and I'm changing things just a little bit. But that's a great thing about telling stories, is you can tell them and change them to fit you as a storyteller, because you can be storytellers, every single one of you, grown-ups and little people. So let's start. Once upon a time, there was a queen and she was a smart and fair-minded queen, and her villagers loved her. They loved her. Oh, boys and girls, I forgot to mention my mask. I have it on again today, but it's just me under here, just me. So let's get back to the story. So the queen was very respected. She made a lot of she, she was basically the judge and villagers would come to her with disagreements like was the fence too far over on one villager's property? What to do about the goat that ate the other villagers crops and so forth. And she was a very fair judge and the villagers all loved her. She was very kind. She spread her money around. She didn't hoard all her gold to herself. She invested in her villagers. So they really did love her very much. But the queen had a couple of flaws, not big flaws, but tiny flaws. The first flaw is she was very, very gullible. That's a big word. Do some of you know what it means? Gullible means she pretty much believed everybody, which was a problem as a queen, which is why she had an advisor who helped her quite a bit. Her second flaw was the queen had a weakness for clothing. She was a shopaholic and she had closets full of beautiful dresses and beautiful outfits, pantsuits and beautiful, of course, several beautiful crowns. So she, she was quite a quite a clothing fashion fanatic. And there was a parade coming up. And it was the biggest event of the whole year. I know we can't have parades right now, boys and girls. But I love going to parades. And the queen was very excited about the parade. She looked forward to it all year long. All of the groups were in the parade. All of the school teachers, all of the, some of the people from the Farmers Association, all kinds of groups would march in the parade and she was very excited because she got to end the parade in her carriage and she would sit up in the front not in the carriage itself where she usually sat when she was traveling but up in the front with the driver to wave to the citizens 
because that was the kind of queen she wanted. She didn't want to be cloistered in the carriage. She wanted them to see her. And she wanted to see them. Well, she was very excited about the parade, but there was one problem. Remember how I said she was a fashionista? She looked through her outfits and though her advisor, who had been with her for years and was really more like a sister to her, would tell her, your majesty, you have so, so many beautiful dresses. Can you not find one that's perfect for the parade? But the queen simply sadly shook her head. No, no, I'm not happy. I'm going to put out a royal decree searching for clothing designers far and wide to come and show me their ideas. And then I'm going to pick one to design my ensemble for the parade. Why, I think that, I think that's a fabulous idea. Her advisor agreed. And so she and the queen, oh, let me, oh, my mask keeps falling down. It didn't fall down on Monday, it's falling down today. There we go. So the queen put out her decree and she and the advisor interviewed designers from far and wide, all over the lands. But the queen just wasn't seeing anything wonderful, unique enough. And then along came the crafty, sneaky magician. Only the magician wasn't a magician at all. He was a con artist. He had come just west from villages just west and taken their valuables, their gold, their jewels, their coins. He'd taken them by scamming them, boys and girls, telling them, promising them things like a magical elixir to fix an ailment or a spell that would make someone fall madly in love with them. And it was all, of course, nonsense. But again, remember what I told you about the queen? She was a little gullible. So when the magician, and he was a very, and the magician was a very good actor, the queen fell for it. And this is what the magician said. Oh, <laughs> your majesty, your majesty. I, Magnificent. And I have fabrics that will make the most beautiful clothing you've ever seen. They're magical fabrics. They're magical fabrics and they have a very special quality. Only the most qualified, the most intelligent, the most suited to their professions. Yeah, some of those. We ask, I don't know. Well, will be able to see the garments. You will be talked about for lands round and miles away. Oh, well, that's all the queen needed to hear. Remember, she was such a fashionista. It was her one weakness. And so she said, oh, 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 I love what you're telling me. And I love the beautiful fabrics because of course, the queen couldn't see them at all. But she wasn't going to tell the magician that. She thought she was a good queen. She loved being the queen and she loved her villagers and she didn't want to lose her position, get booted out for another queen. So she told the fib and she said, oh, these are the most beautiful. Oh, please, please, please. Get to work immediately. And she led the magician to his quarters. Well, the magician got a pretty good deal. He was given in advance a large bag of gold 
and he was going to get one more bag of gold. That's two bag of golds. When it was all over. So the magician was getting a good deal. Plus food brought to him delicious food. We're going to meet the chef in a minute. And the chef made delicious food and very comfortable chambers filled with tools of the trade, like a weaving loom and a sewing machine, anything else he would need. But the magician dearly did a lick of work. He was so impressed with himself. He had conned all of these people out of their valuable possessions, and now he was taking the queen for a fool. He was taking the queen for a fool. All he had to do was pretend, and he was a good actor. So he pretended to weave and he pretended to sew. And he was at it for hours. Even late at night, if anybody peeked in, they would see him. And when they weren't watching, he would be relaxing, taking a nap. But the queen didn't know. She thought he was hard at work. But she was getting nervous. She wondered what was going on in that room. She really wondered. So she asked her trusted advisor, I'm gonna be the advisor, it's gonna take the key hand off. And her advisor was very nervous because she knew what she was going to ask. And she was very nervous, but when the queen said, and I'm gonna wear two outfits here so I can change them to, Oh, my trusted advisor, will you please go and check on the magician and see how he's coming and then report back to me? Well, the advisor did not want to do it. But this was her dear friend. And so she said, of course, of course, of course, my lady. Of course, I'll go and check. And she went. She went to see the magician. And the magician jumped up from his nap, jumped up from his nap, and began to visibly weave, weaving, weaving, weaving. So when the advisor came in, and he said, is this not the most beautiful fabric you've ever seen, my lady? Of course, she had to say, why, why, yes. Yes, it's just, just beautiful, beautiful, just, 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 just lovely. Oh, 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 I'm so impressed. The queen is going to look fabulous because the advisor, she did not, the advisor did not want to lose her position. She'd been the queen's advisor for years and they had been girls together and she didn't even want to think about not being in her position anymore. So she went back to the queen. What did you think? What did you think, my advisor? And the advisor said, Oh, it's the most beautiful, opulent material. You are going to love it. Love it, love it, love it. You're going to look just beautiful. Very well. Well, days went by and the queen was getting more and more impatient. So she decided to send her second most trusted employee. And that was the chef. And the chef had been cooking for the queen's family for years and years. So when the queen said, chef, Will you please go and see the beautiful clothing that is being made for me? The chef agreed. And off the chef went to see the beautiful garments. But there was no beautiful garments there. But what was the chef to do? When the magician asked, what do you think? The chef simply agreed. The chef agreed. And he went and he told the queen that it was the most beautiful gown he'd ever seen. And so the queen was very, very, very excited. 
after the chef's words. And days passed and finally it was time. And she went into the chambers and she still saw nothing. And her advisor saw nothing. And the magician said, is it not the most beautiful thing you ever seen? And she said, oh yes, yes, of course. And then the magician took his bag of gold and ran out the door because he did not want to be around. He had a feeling he was going to get found out. So he did the smart thing and that magician ran off to the next town to see who he could scam. And the queen and her advisor made a show of putting on the dress and the advisor did her very best to button up the buttons. And then the day of the parade came and then the parade came. And the queen was in her carriage, right on the front of the carriage, waving, and all of the town was whispering, it's the queen. She's, all I see is her under things. Where's the dress? But nobody wanted to say anything because they were all afraid they would lose their jobs and be thought of fools. So there was one who was not afraid. She had nothing to lose. It was the little girl. She was only six years old and she really didn't have a job to lose and she didn't really care too much what anybody thought. And so she said at the top of her voice, the queen is in her underwear and they have polka dots. And everybody began whispering and then laughing and the queen was mortified. The queen was mortified, so she jumped down. She jumped into the carriage. She went back to the castle. And the villagers forgave her. They knew she was gullible, but they put out a proclamation and they caught that magician. And as punishment, not only did he have to return the gold, but he had to be the town tailor for the rest of his days. And that is the story of the emperor's new clothes. Now I'm gonna show you, you know that neat crown I made? I'm gonna show you really quickly because we're already a little longer than I usually am. All you need is a paper plate, just like this. Cut it in half, or not, don't cut it in half, fold it in half. And then you're going to cut triangles almost to the edge of the plate. And you're going to end up with something just like this. Then you can take your markers or your crayons and decorate it. And you'll end up with a crown just like this. Let's do our nursery rhyme and then it will be time to do our goodbye song and say goodbye. And we'll do it twice. The old woman who lived in a shoe. Remember boys and girls that you can tell your own stories using things at home. Try it yourself, try to be your own storyteller with your grown ups. All right, let's try this one. The old woman who lived in the shoe. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth, that's like some soup, along with some bread and sent them and hugged them all soundly and sent them to bed. Well, let's try that again. I goofed up a little. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth along with some bread, then hugged them all soundly, that means very hard, and sent them to bed. All right, boys and girls, remember to visit us at www southfieldlibrary.org. And if you want to say hi via email, try this email address and send us a line. Let us know what you're doing. Let us know the books you're reading. Let us know the stories you're telling. And remember to check out Imagine Your Menagerie for what creature you could make with materials from your home. Tomorrow, it's last week was Thunderbird, the week before is Nine-Tailed Fox. The week before that was Dragon. Let's see what this week is. Be sure to tune into Facebook. And remember to come back next Thursday for another story. And this Monday, another episode, our final episode of Imagine Your Mono.
not imagine your menagerie. Oh, get your imagination cooking. We have so much fun stuff going on. I can't keep track of it. I'll see you all.